Hello, it's Scott Madley here with a follow-up on Issa's ill-fated Schiaparelli lander. So, in the in, in the days since its initial landing attempt and failure, we have had photographs of the site. Now, almost immediately afterwards, Mar the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter was able to capture uh, an updated image using its context camera. That is a lower resolution camera that's designed to kind of scan the surface and look for things of interest. But... Uh, just yesterday, they were able to get uh, the high-rise camera onto the target. Now, the high-rise stands for the High Resolution Imaging Science Experiment, and that is a big, big camera. I mean, calling it a camera is an understatement. It has a half-meter aperture. It is a, basically a reflecting telescope, and it's the largest camera, I believe, ever carried on a deep space mission. Its resolution is uh, like one microradian, and that means that on the surface of Mars, it can resolve things down to about one foot across, 30 centimeters or thereabouts. Now, you know, just to put this in context, if you look at Google Maps and you look at the highest resolution images from satellites, uh, of, you know, if you're looking away from the cities where they use uh, your aircraft images, they generally have about one meter resolution. So this is better than the satellite resolution that's generally available for most of the Earth's surface. Uh, I mean, it, there are amazingly good images that come out of this thing. So the low quality image we got last week was great, but now with the high rise imagery, we can really resolve details. Now, the area covered is about you know two kilometers by two kilometers, I, roughly speaking. And uh, there's three points of interest. First of all is the actual impact site. Now, the impact site is, they look at it in terms of changes compared to what was seen previously. And, well, what's very obvious is a very dark region right in the middle of this. This is believed to be an actual impact crater that was thrown up about maybe two and a half meters across. Uh, it's probably based upon the mass of the spacecraft and the expected impact velocity of a few hundred uh, meters per second. It's no more than maybe one to two feet deep, so it's not going to be a deep gouge in the surface of Mars. It is a lot less impressive than that other Schiaparelli crater. Now around it, we have this kind of ejecta that has been thrown up. And what's really, really interesting is that it's very asymmetrical. If you look out to the west of it, there is much more stuff that's been tossed out. So normally when you see an asymmetric ejecta blanket, that is because uh, the impactor fell at a very low angle of incidence and it kind of scooped stuff up and continued uh, going in, uh, you know, in its particular direction. However, in this case, the spacecraft had already slowed down from interplanetary velocities. It was on a parachute when things started to go wrong. So it was almost certainly falling vertically. So to pr produce an asymmetric ejecta pattern, there had to be something that happened at the impact, some sort of explosion. Perhaps one of the tanks ruptured preferentially in one direction. Perhaps there was some combustion. We won't really know. Maybe more analysis will let us uh, give us more clues as to what really went on. There is also a kind of arc-shaped feature to the right, to the, the northeast of it. And they're not really sure what that is just yet. Again, more analysis will happen. Also, they pointed out that there's a few light spots in the area. They're not sure whether that's noise, but it could equally be bits of debris and things like that. More analysis. Anyway, uh, if you go south of that, there is uh, an area which shows the parachute and the rear heat shield that it was attached to. I guess that landed safely. And to the, the northeast or north East northeast, we have uh, the front heat shield. It landed, it obviously landed much faster, so it created its own little mini ejecta feature, and that's been found. So, yeah, it's not that we're not really going to find out any more science from this unless somebody can figure out what to do about a. Uh, can so infer something from hydrazine chemistry according, you know, interacting with the Martian surface. But it is really interesting to see this uh, at this resolution, these details. High rise is part of the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and that space mission has been around Mars for the last 10 years and has produced 
tons of amazingly high quality images of the Martian surface. It is really, really good, uh, worth checking out as well. But uh, in other news, Trace Gas Orbiter continues to be going well, so that's good. And uh, yeah, we'll follow the mission for future updates. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>